there are very many reasons to preserve the rest of the pyramid. Is that, sound, is that very, you know, humanistic? Mm, not really. And will technology create um, that divide in, in a very ugly way? Very likely, very likely. Um, I think one way around that is perhaps as, you know, in 10, 15 years as we realize this concept more and more, to build in some fail-safes where perhaps no matter what happens, you know, laws always exist that um, no matter how far one species or one uh, person who uploads themselves into a machine goes, they are able to, you know, they're not able to, um, you know, negate or deny the lives of and the freedoms of that kind of other group that chose not to do that. It's And maybe that would be one of the most principal rules that society will come up with in order to preserve the various levels. But the problem is that the way it's going to work is that once you tap into artificial intelligence, you may become 1,000, 1 million times smarter than somebody within a matter of years. And if you're a million times smarter than somebody, you know, if you're tapping into a computer or some type of servers that are, you know, stacked up as high as the Empire State Building, um, what makes you not, you, you, what makes you, your sense of morality, your sense of perception, your sense of everything could dramatically change. And this is, you know, these are some of the core issues with why a lot of people, including skeptics, atheists, and humanists, are actually against transhumanism, because they see this conflict developing. And I think most transhumanists uh, don't really have any easy answers to it. My novel says that, yes, there's no easy answers, but regardless, um, from an evolutionary perspective, as an entity, we follow these rules. And, you know, some will just get left at the wayside. It, it's a, it's a, not a very pretty philosophy. It's certainly not, you know, nice in any way. However, I'm hoping that by the third law, we would be able to say, well, there's a real good reason to preserve anything and just to completely leave um, others behind that don't want to embrace that technology. I, I, it's hard for me to imagine, even if I'm a million times smarter um, than another entity, to want to destroy it. I still don't even like killing ants or flies or anything like that. I, I, in that sense, I take a somewhat Buddhist approach where I, I don't know if it's actually valuable to do that. Um, in fact, I'm not to go on about vegetarianism or anything like that, but I tend not to even like eating animals as a natural result of just this, con this conflict in me that says it, it just doesn't feel nice. Uh, that said, the philosophy itself uh, is built upon the evolutionary principles of biology and, and how evolution uh, progresses forward. I, I don't know if that's going to change just from a, because, you know, a lot of humanists come in and say, but that's not very nice. Whether it's nice or not is not how evolution got to where it is. Cooperation and, uh, again, was involved with how we got where we are, though. No, I mean, th th that is true, too. I just think ultimately when you're talking about intelligences that are potentially thousands of times our capacity and have whole different cultural standards, they're going to leave. I, I think one of the problem, one of the issues I have with humanism is that it is a mammalian based kind of design. We think it because we feel it from an emotional perspective because we generally like people like I like talking to you and I like my family and I like my neighbors, but transhumanists are going to be beyond that sense of biology. There may be no more flesh. The, you know, there may be no more DNA. It just may be programming. It might be very cold. And, um, and that's where the three laws come in. Again, the three laws might be applying more to the future of entities rather than what they uh, apply to right now. And so, again, we have these conflicts. And uh, like I said, I'm not 100% full bore with Jethro Knights. I, I wake up and I think, God, I can never do that. That's just not how I could be. I have a family. I, you know, I, I, I love my family. However, I tried to design the philosophy without the baggage that I might have from those uh, feelings, those emotions. I tried to design it as purely rationally as I could from uh, the perspective that intelligence might become very different in the future. And, um, and we're about to die, or at least I'm going to die in 10, 15 years, and therefore I need to do something. So that's kind of where that philosophy ties in. Okay, I, I listened to a discussion that you had with David Wood. Uh, the the futurists, uh, I believe it was back in October or November, and I'm going to read a quote, and I'm 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 reading it charitably, as in I'm I'm not trying to attack you with this. I just want you to put it in some context for me. Sure. Right? 
Um, and it's not a complete quote. I have truncated it slightly, but I'm, I'm asking because this seems to be along the lines of what we're discussing, and I'm not trying to take it out of context. So with that disclaimer, um, you said, I will embrace aggressive tactics to bring transhumanism to the world. At what point does that turn into a militancy or something violent? At this time, at this point in time, I am in no way advocating anything of that nature. I believe aggressive tactics can be done in means that have been done historically, taking to the streets or doing things that cause huge amounts of media attention. Those are my sense of aggressive tactics. Now, with that in mind, that sounds to me that that you are once more with the first rule of the three more concerned with yourself than anyone else and that that just it rubs me the wrong way in terms of um consideration for others i, I don't i don't think that consideration for others uh is strictly uh, a flaw as you, you seem to be using mammalian as a derogatory term as in something we should rise above and i i disagree in that if we are living with others and trying to minimize harm and that is, if not as much of an importance as our own survival, as uh, you know, it's, it's not necessarily more important that we minimize harm than ourselves, but is, in my opinion, at least equally as important. And if that's the case, to have someone like you who's coming up with these sort of philosophies, uh, these sort of ideas, and and are obviously very motivated to. Uh, more than than anything else, apparently, to provoke this conversation and uh, and cause change directly, as you seem to be doing. You're you're an activist for this. Um, it sounds to me irrational, and uh, that you are you, your concern is not for anyone else except for yourself and people who agree with you. That's the way it comes off to me. Although I haven't been um, doing a huge amount of research on this. That is the impression that I'm getting, and that to me seems irresponsible and dangerous. So, <clears throat> to, to a certain extent, I think you're correct by thinking that. So, th there's two things. The first is, in my opinion, I generally believe that when someone breaks through social boundaries or breaks edges, they generally lead society into um, something that they've never seen before. And if you have a hundred people that do that, um, maybe two or three of them do something good for civilization, and the other 97 are do something bad. But those two or three end up seriously affecting the outcome of the way society moves ahead, hopefully in a positive direction. And I hopefully am one of those three, I don't know, but uh, I am one of those people that I'm trying to look at the the system that society and that culture has crafted and say this is not moving fast enough for me. Um, we have the technology so that I don't have to die. We have the technology so my family doesn't have to die so that you don't have to die uh, should something like that happen. However, we're not using it because people are thinking of something else. So I do things that I can to push outside those limits and oftentimes they seem either shocking or they seem morally wrong. But the nature of change is oftentimes that you need to break through what people consider morally um, correct uh, positions. Um, generally, all change comes from something that no one saw before. So I am one of those people that am trying to do this. Am I going to be correct or am I correct or am I wrong? This is something that only time will tell. But I'm hoping that in a society where you know, we are trying to get better, we are trying to live longer, we are trying to be happier and uh, progress as a civilization, that people, you know, such as myself, come out and try to break through boundaries. So that, that's the first thing is that I, I kind of, I, I do, um, you know, support my stance and have thought a lot about it, just purely from a philosophical point of view, that um, revolutionary type of ideas uh, are often ugly, are often very counter to what is politically correct. And yet they're absolutely imperative for society and civilization to move forward and evolve into the best that it can be. And the second thing is that I also believe that when people do uh, what might be called eccentric things or, or um, extreme things, the other people that aren't involved tend to generally benefit from that. 
um, you know, oftentimes we'll say something like, uh, you know, this person has a monopoly and he's been, you know, not paying enough workers, his, their salaries or whatnot. But the truth is, had that one person not started that business in the first place, a whole generation might have lost out on something that he invented. And therefore, I often believe that it's good for individuals to break out and try new things. Um, you may not see a benefit because I'm talking about an anti-mammalian type of activity. And yet I believe that if I'm correct, the technology that you, your family, your loved ones might get to benefit from uh, would be more than of a reward than this initial idea that just because I'm saying something very different and it sounds ugly, it doesn't work. I'm a firm believer that we have to, um, you know, break out of, outside our bounds and break outside a baggage culture in order to do anything. And I think by doing that in itself, there might be rewards that nobody can see down the road. And especially since I'm pushing for a very pro-science environment, a pro-technology environment, I'm hoping that the, uh, the happiness, the longer lives, the um, a sense of uh, ending poverty, which are generally some of those same things I, I feel like that are quite similar to a humanistic approach, would all occur. And so I'm hoping, um, you know, what I'm doing is correct. I would also be devastated if it wasn't. I mean, I'm a, a nice, upright, moral person, I think. And uh, I'm not trying to be a selfish, narcissistic son of a bitch. I'm trying to be a good human being who has a vision and just wants to carry it out in hopes that his family, his loved ones, and generally uh, people like yourself um, will all benefit so that we can all become more valuable and contribute towards the evolution of the species and hopefully towards um, living better lives. I, I admire that, that sentiment, and that is how I try to look at things as well. But go coming back to your three rules, and I I'd like to read them, uh, the, the three laws of transhumanism. One, a transhumanist must safeguard one's own existence above all else. Two, a transhumanist must strive to achieve omnipotence as expediently as possible, so long as one's actions do not conflict with the first law. And three, a transhumanist must safeguard value in the universe, so long as one's actions do not conflict with the first and second laws. And that sounds to me like personal concern is so far above the concern of others that I, my, my last question is just more to more of a uh, an anecdote and I'm, I'm hoping that you have uh, uh, some some something to reflect on it um, at what point does a person's desire for personal gain despite the danger it poses to others negate the possibility of the same goals that are working so hard to achieve so th this is a <laughs> an excellent question that is probably reserved for either the end of the second book or perhaps the beginning of the third book but you know you're getting into the thoughts of how, once you achieve so much power, when does that power in itself turn on itself? Very deep and uh, interesting philosophical uh, ideas. Um, you know, the, the quick answer is that it, the three laws may not remain perfect in the state of some type of advanced intelligence that is a thousand times smarter than I am now or a million times. In fact, I have often thought that in a world of machine intelligences, um, as crazy as it sounds, socialism or a type of communism would be the better preferred method of distribution of goods and values between machine intelligences that can kind of um, have much easier, simpler uh, patterns of recognizing each other, interacting with each other, and using each other to, for greater gain. Um, it's humans that have, because of our biological, uh, you know, um, backgrounds, we have such large egos and such needs to uh, sort of move forward. But we might come to a point when that may not necessarily be the case. So for me, the three laws truly apply to entities that are at least thinking in the same mindset that we are right now. It's very difficult um, for me to even give you a reasonable answer about an intelligence that might be 10 times the amount that uh, I am. Um, it, it, the three laws might be rewritten completely. And I, I don't like to go back on my philosophy that I've spent so much time um, talking about, but it has always bothered me, especially with Ayn Rand and Objectivist, where a lot of people have compared my book to uh, Atlas Shrugged, that they are not absolutely willing to bend whatsoever. I think with so much physics going on, discoveries in physics and discovering the sciences, it's very difficult to say exactly what the universe will look like in 20, 30, 40, 50 years. I think we all need to take a step back and say, well, we can establish the ideas we have now, 
including the three laws of transhumanism, which really work well for me today.